In this video, we're going to talk about the 1, 2, and the 1, 4 addition products with dienes. But let's begin our discussion with dienes. So here is a typical alkene. It has one double bond. A diene is basically an alkene, but with two double bonds. Now, there's different types of dienes. This particular diene is known as a conjugated diene. The reason why it's conjugated is you have alternating double and single bonds. Here it's a double bond. This is a carbon-carbon single bond, and that's a double bond. Conjugated dienes have special characteristics. Now, there are other types of dienes that you need to be familiar with. So this is an isolated diene because the double bonds are too far apart from each other. And then you also have cumulated dienes. So that's where the double bonds are very close to each other. Of these three, the most stable is the conjugated diene due to resonance. An isolated diene reacts in the same way as a regular alkene because the double bonds are far apart. But a conjugated diene it reacts in a different way. And we're gonna focus on that in our discussion today. So let's begin. So let's start with this common diene. This is called 1,3-butadiene. If we count the number of carbons, we have a total of four carbons. So think of butane. And we have a double bond on carbon one and three. So it's called 1,3-butadiene. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to react this diene with hydrobromic acid, HBr. But we're going to react it under two different conditions. We're going to react it at low temperature, let's say negative 40 degrees Celsius, and at high temperature, which we'll say at 60 degrees Celsius. What will be the major product? for this reaction. What would you say? Well, at low temperature, you're going to get something called the kinetic product. The hydrogen is going to add on carbon 1. This is let's call this carbon 1, 2, 3 and 4. By the way, due to the symmetry of this diene, these two alkenes are equally reactive. So the hydrogen is going to go on carbon 1. The bromine is going to go on carbon 2. We're going to have a double bond between 3 and 4. So this is called the 1-2 addition product because HBr added to carbons 1 and 2. Now this is also called the kinetic product because it forms faster. Now at high temperatures, the thermodynamic product will be the most stable product. It's going to be the major product. The hydrogen is going to add to carbon 1, but the bromine atom is going to add to carbon 4. And we're going to have the double bond between carbons 2 and 3. So this is called the 1,4 addition product. As you can see, on carbon 1, we have the hydrogen. And on the carbon 4, we have the bromine atom. Now, this is also called the thermodynamic product. It is the product with the most stable alkane. I mean, the most stable alkane, I take that back. So this is the product that forms at high temperature. Now, the kinetic product, the reaction associated with the kinetic product is an irreversible reaction. So we're going to use one arrow to represent it. The reaction associated with the thermodynamic product is reversible. So we're going to have two arrows. But typically, the one pointing to the right is going to be the bigger arrow because this product is the most stable product. Now let's talk about why this product is the most stable product. The answer has to do with the alkene stability. Notice the number of R groups that are attached to this alkene. This particular alkene has two R groups. 
so it's a die substitute alkene. This alkene only has one R group that are attached to the two carbon atoms that are double bonded. So this is a mono substitute alkene. So it is the least stable of the two. So make sure you understand that difference. The kinetic product is the product that forms faster, ideally at low temperatures. The thermodynamic product is the most stable alkene product that forms as the major product at high temperatures. Now let's briefly review alkene stability. So this is a tetra substituted alkene. It has four alkyl groups attached to the two carbon atoms that are double bonded. This is a tri-substituted alkene. It has three R groups. A tri-substituted alkene is more stable than a di-substituted alkene. Here we have a trans di-substituted alkene, and that's usually more stable than a cis di-substituted alkene. And here we have a mono substituted alkene, which is more stable than ethene which I'm just going to write like that. So the more R groups that you have around an alkene, the more stable it is. And that's going to help you to identify the thermodynamic product. But now let's go back to the reaction of 1,3-butadiene with HBr. And this time, let's talk about the mechanism. So let's react 1,3-butadiene with HBr at low temperature conditions. So as was mentioned before, we're going to get the kinetic product as the major product. Even though both products can form, this reaction is under kinetic control. So the one that forms faster is going to be the major product when the temperature is low. Now in this reaction, the diene is going to behave as the nucleophile. HBr, the acid, is going to be the electrophile. So we're going to write up a mechanism. And to show the arrow, just remember, when, when drawing the arrow, it's going to start from a region of high electron density to a region of low electron density. This double bond is electron rich. Hydrogen being partially positive is electron poor. So the arrow basically describes the direction of electron flow, so to speak. So when the double bond interacts with the hydrogen, the bond between HBr is going to break those two electrons is going to be pulled towards the more electronegative bromine atom. Now here's a question for you. Why should we put the hydrogen on carbon 1 and not on carbon 2? Notice what happens if we put the hydrogen on carbon 2. If we were to do that, we would get a primary carbocation. But if we were to put the hydrogen on carbon 1, the plus charge is going to be on carbon 2. So we get a more stable secondary carbocation. But notice that it's adjacent to a double bond. So what we get is a secondary allylic carbocation. And so that's the reason why hydrogen is going to add on carbon 1. It's because we get a more stable carbocation intermediate. So that's the first thing you need to consider. Where will the hydrogen go? Now, what will the bromine atom do? Or more specifically, the bromide ion. Now, by the way, this structure has a resonance structure. We could move the alkene here. If we take those two pi electrons and move it to the left, we can get another intermediate. So this is going to be a less stable primary allylic carbocation. So this is secondary, and this is primary. So just looking at the carbocation stabilities, this particular resonance structure is more favorable than this one. So because the secondary allylic carbocation is more stable, it's going to form faster because there's less energy that's required to generate this particular resonance structure. Now, 
which carbocation will the bromide ion interact with? Is it going to be the secondary carbocation or the primary allylic carbocation? Well, as was mentioned before, the fact that this is more stable means that bromide is more likely to interact with this secondary carbocation. But that is not the only reason. There's also something called the proximity effect. Because bromide is so much closer to the secondary carbocation, it's easier for it to interact with that particular carbocation. This positive charge is further away from the bromide ion, so it's less likely that the bromide ion is going to interact with the primary uh, carbocation. So therefore, there are two factors that are favoring the 1-2 kinetic product. The first most important factor is the proximity effect. And for this specific example, the second thing is we have a more stable carbocation intermediate. So once the bromide ion combined with the uh, carbocation, we're going to get the 1-2 addition product. So at low temperature conditions, this is going to be the major product. And the driving force is the proximity effect and the fact that we get a more stable carbocation intermediate. Now, let's draw the resonance structure for the formation of the 1,4 product. So let's react 1,3-butadiene with hydrobromic acid at high temperature conditions. So let's use positive 80 degrees Celsius. So at a high temperature, this reaction is reversible. So the most stable alkene product will be the major product. So like before, we're going to react the alkene with HBr. And we're going to put the hydrogen on the primary carbon so that we can put a positive charge on the secondary carbon. Now to get the 1,4 product, we need to draw the resonance structure where this double bond is going to move here. And now we have the plus charge on the primary allylic carbocation. And then the bromide ion is simply going to interact with the carbocation. And so that's how we can get the 1,4 thermodynamic product. So that's the mechanism that you can write to show it. And so for this one, the driving force is alkene stability. The thermodynamic product is the one with the most stable alkene product. 